Okay, students, in this video, we're going to talk about density. Just to hopefully review what you've seen before, density is what's called an intensive property of matter. Intensive properties, you may recall, do not depend on how much of a substance you have. That would be extensive. Instead, an intensive property does not depend on how much you have. So for example, if you have a small amount of pure gold, it will have the same density as if you had a large amount of pure gold. So density is the amount of mass in a given volume. So it is a mass per volume. And that's why it is intensive, because a sample of a substance if it's a pure substance, then they will always have the same density, the same amount of mass in a given volume, regardless of how much you have. You may recall that the general den equation for density is D for density equals mass divided by volume, D equals M over V. And I would like for you to take just a moment, pause the video, and I would like for you to rearrange that density equation to manipulate it to solve for mass and to solve for volume. Now this, this lowercase m right here is the abbreviation for mass, not for meters, okay? So if d equals m divided by v, I want you to rearrange this algebraically first to solve for mass and then to solve for volume. This is a fairly trivial algebraic manipulation. You should be able to do this because algebra is a prerequisite for this course. But I want to point out something to some of you who may end up uh, trying to take a mental shortcut and getting the wrong answer. So go ahead and pause the video, solve those two equations, and when you're done, resume the video. Okay, I'm assuming that you're coming back from uh, pausing the video, and let's go ahead and do this. If d equals m over v, then you may recall to solve for m what we have to do is do we have to get volume away from this side so m is in the numerator alone by itself. To do that, we, div we multiply both sides by the volume, v times d. It cancels out over here, so m equals v times d or d times v, it doesn't matter, d, v. So hopefully that's what you got for mass, mass equals density times volume. Now some of you, if in my experience, some of you probably had m equals d divided by v. So that's why I wanted to go through this process uh, just to make sure that you see that this is not the case. Now if we're solving for volume, then we have our original equation, d equals m over v. And you may recall that in order to get volume alone by itself, it needs to be in the numerator so it is in the denominator here, so we have to multiply both sides by the volume. So it will cancel out over here. And now we need to get rid of the density over here, so we divide that side by density. Multiply that by this reciprocal, 1 over density. So the density cancels and we have volume equals mass divided by density. And that one, many of you probably got right. But this is the one that, uh, for some reason, people take some sort of mental shortcut and they say, well, if d equals m over v, then m must be equal to d over v. And that ends up giving them the wrong answer. So just be careful with your algebra. There's the algebraic manipulations for those two equations. So now that you have this equation and you can manipulate it to solve for mass or volume, we can use this general equation or formula to solve for mass or volume. So I have an example problem here. If a sample of pure titanium has a mass of 4.52 grams, and I give you the density of titanium is 4.506 grams per cubic centimeter, and there's our cubic centimeter volume unit. Remember that a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. So the question asks, what is the volume of the sample? So basically you're going to rearrange the equation and show your work. So I would like for you to do this problem, pause the video and resume the video when you're done, and then I'll work through it. 
Okay, assuming you're coming back from having paused the video, we are going to start as we always do when we are using an equation, showing our math. The way that we show our math is we write the equation first. This is the general form of the equation and it, al it always comes first or before we start uh, manipulating it. The second step is to show the algebraic manipulation of this equation. So you can show what I've done up here to show the manipulation, or you can go ahead and just rewrite it, V equals M over D. But in any event, what I want to see is I want to see the general form of the equation, then the rearranged equation. That way I know where you got this rearranged equation from, you got it from the general equation. Notice I haven't plugged in any numbers yet. That comes later. Now that I have this equation, that's what I'm going to use. So here we go. Volume, which is what I'm searching for, is the mass divided by the density. So mass is 4.52 grams. Density is 4.506. And you may recall what I talked about uh, when I mentioned derived units. This is a grams per cubic centimeter. And what that means, it's a grams in the numerator of this term and a cubic centimeter in the denominator of that term. That is a derived unit, right? Okay, now what? Well, we can easily do the math here, 4.52 divided by 4.506. And we have a number, it's 1.003. Uh, one point, it's 1.0031 1 and so forth, but I only want three sig figs, so look at that, it rounds to 1.00, but now what are the appropriate units? Well, this grams will cancel with that grams, and notice that leaves me with a 1 over cubic centimeters, but it's in the denominator. So if you divide by some number, it's the same as multiplying by its inverse. So if you multiplied by its inverse, you would be multiplying all this by cubic centimeters, which means that if you have an inverse cubic centimeters in a denominator, it's going to put the cubic centimeters in the numerator. Well, does that make sense? Is a cubic centimeter an appropriate unit of measurement for this question? What is the volume? So it's asking for a volume, and I've given a volume unit of measurement. So there we go. Correct sig figs, correct unit, and I circle it and we're done. Okay? All right. Now we have another sample problem to work down here. And it says a sample of pure aluminum has a density. So in this case, I'm giving you the density is 2.70 grams per. Oh, that is a typo. Let's fix that. Grams per cubic centimeter. I'll fix that in the, the next uh, iteration of the notebook. At our classroom's temperature. I mentioned that because a density will change, can change. Densities of substances can change at different temperatures because they may expand or they may contract and they're, therefore occupy different amounts of volume for a given amount of mass. So I'm just specifying at our classroom's temperature. If the sample is a cube that measures 2.0 centimeters on each side, how much mass would the sample have? So this is a little bit more challenging of a problem. You're going to have to think a little bit about some geometry here. But basically you're going to calculate the mass. So give it a shot, pause the video, and resume the video when you think you have your answer. Okay, coming back from resuming the video, we're going to do this problem. We're asked for how much mass, and we're given a density here, and we're given a cube, and we're given the side uh, length of that cube. So let's think about the, the equation I'm going to use first. I'm going to calculate mass. So first of all, I have my density equation, D equals M over V. I want to so rearrange it to solve for mass. So here I'm being diligent, and I'm showing my work. 
and that comes dv and i could do the algebra and cross out as i need to but i know that mass equals density times volume all right now that i have this mass equals density times volume i need the numbers for density and volume to plug in so i'm given density it's 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter right But what is the volume? Well, in the problem it says I'm given a cube with a side, each side of the cube is 2.0 centimeters on a side. I'm gonna to have to do a little geometry here first, okay? And the geometry is I've gotta figure out the volume of this cube. So if I've got a cube and the side of each side of the cube is 2.0 centimeters, then there, that's, that's not a, that's not a, an exponent, I just made a mistake there. If each side of the cube is 2.0 centimeters, then what is the volume of a cube? Well, you may re recall that a volume of a cube equals its length times its width times its height. Well, if each side is 2.0 centimeters, 2.0 centimeters times 2.0 centimeters times 2.0 centimeters, right? And if I do that math, 2.0 times 2.0 times 2.0 equals 8.0. What units are the volume going to be? The volume is going to be in units of centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters cubed. Does it make sense for a volume to have that unit? Yes, it does, because a centimeter cubed, cubic centimeters, is a volume unit. Well, now I have the volume of that cube I can now plug that into my equation over here for volume. 8.0 cubic centimeters, right? Let's separate that little side calculation from my main work down here. And now if I take a calculator and I plug in 2.70 grams per centimeter times 8.0, I get an answer that is 21.6 and I need to round it to two sig figs, right? Three sig figs, two sig figs, multiplication, fewest number of sig figs. So I round that to 22. So this is 22. And notice how the cubic centimeters here cancels with the cubic centimeters there. My units of measurement are grams. And I ask myself, does that make sense? That a mass is in grams? Sure, that's, that's the appropriate unit of measurement for mass. And I'm done. There's the answer. Okay.